Remember what we've been learning in class the past few days about the Industrial Revolution and conditions for factory workers. Most people felt it best to leave the economy alone, laissez-faire, let the free market correct itself. However, some came up with new ideas and new thinking about the economy and society. This presentation highlights these new thinkers. The first person that we'll talk about is Thomas Malthus, and he worried about population. He was very afraid that people would multiply faster than food. He urged families to have fewer children uh, and was actually, you know, seemed to be correct for a while that, you know, it made sense based on the, the food supply in the 17 and, and into the early 1800s. However, as you guys all know, we're not all starving today and, and people in the world who do not have enough to eat. It's not because there isn't enough food out there, but there are, you know, other political and economic conditions. Um, the reason for this is that, as you probably have noticed, there are technological advances in agriculture and in raising animals and, you know, bringing different types of foods from one country to another. So this has never so far become an issue. Um, another thinker also worried about population, and his name was David Ricardo. He worried about it as it related to people's wages. His theory was the iron law of wages. He said there's no way for the working class to escape poverty. If you give people money, they'll have more children. Those children will grow up to become workers. And then the natural laws of supply and demand dictate that if there are more workers, every worker will receive lower wages and the poor will just become poor once again. Now, Jeremy Bentham decided that Really, it's up to the government to intervene and make some laws that are useful, all right, laws that make the majority of people in a society happy. And he called his, his thinking utilitarianism. Again, we're not calling for a lot of government intervention here, but just things like, for example, minimum wage. It might be bad for businesses, but it's good for the majority of people, and so it would be considered a utilitarian or useful law. John Stuart Mill was a follower of Jeremy Bentham, and he also believed that the government should be making laws, but he pushed for laws like child labor reform, public health reform, the right to vote for everyone, even women, even children. Taking it a little further, we had Robert Owen, who could really be considered a socialist, meaning somebody who really wanted um, the government to be controlling just about everything. He was someone who grew up poor himself. He left home at eight years old, worked in a factory, became the factory manager, saved enough money, became like a mill owner with other partners, made enough money from that business venture that he was able to buy his own mill and became quite successful. So he understood what it was like to be that poor factory worker. And he had this pretty revolutionary theory that was, if your workers are happy, they're actually more productive. And so he would set up not just factories for his workers, but he set up these this kind of utopian communities where there were housing and schools and shops and, and his workers were actually very happy and productive. Unfortunately, part of his success was probably due to his own personal management style. And after he died, his ideas were not replicated and his communities uh, failed to prosper when he was no longer around. Lastly, of course, and again in our socialist category, we have Karl Marx, hopefully a name that you've heard of before. In 1848, kind of as a reaction to what he was seeing uh, with these factory workers, he wrote the Communist Manifesto. It does become the basis for communism in the future. He believed that all history was the history of class struggles between the haves, in this case the factory owners, he gave them a fancy name called bourgeoisie, and the have-nots, the factory workers, and he gave them a fancy name, the proletariat. And he said that one day the workers would unite together and overthrow the factory, and everybody would own the factory and what the factory produced together. This was his theory. Anyway.